I'll just, I'll just, yeah, okay. Good afternoon, Sister Angela. And um, I'll just pray, we're just two of us, we'll just pray and God knows the rest. Father in heaven, we want to give you the thanks, the praise and the glory. Thank you so much for your love and grace. Thank you that Sister Angela and myself um, are on this platform. Thank you for this platform and this time. I know Sister Angela is busy driving. Uh, please give us safe traveling mercies. And I pray for others that um, are hesitant to come on, that you may speak to them, that they may come and join, and that your word uh, um, uh, may be heard in all their lives. Bless Sister Angela and bless myself and our families as well. We also pray for the, the prayer retreat uh, that the health expo that they are doing in Wales. Uh, may you go before them and may you be with them in everything that they do. Lord, may he glorify you. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. Okay. Amen. Now sing a song, um, The Wonder of It All. And then we just um, maybe do prayers as well. There's a wonder of sunset at evening, the wonder of sunrise I see, but the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. There's a wonder of springtime and harvest, the sky, the stars, the sun. But the wonder of wonders that thrills my soul is the wonder that only begun. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Oh, the wonder of it all, the wonder of it all, just to think that God loves me. Amen. Father in heaven, we want to thank you for the wonder that you love us, dear Lord, regardless of our shortfalls. You are always there for each and every one of us. As we begin our, our prayer, I'll pray for the prayer requests um, that, are just that we just received. Um, Sister Ingrid had, uh, has asked for prayer request on um, a lady called Teresa. She has just discovered she has an ovarian, ovarian cancer and is terrified. She is married but has no children. She believes in God but is not a practicing Christian. Though she reads a Bible from time to time, she has an SDA relative who witnessed to her and who has requested my prayers. Your prayers will be much appreciated. Thank you. Father in heaven, we want to bring um, Teresa before you. You know her problem at this time, this, this cancer that is taking so many lives. Dear Lord, we bring it before you that you may touch her and heal her. Whatever her beliefs are, her, whatever her background is, dear Father, may she see you in, in, in prayer and may she hold your hand in everything that she does, dear Father. May you be first in her life and last. May you continue to speak to her and not only her and her family as well. And we pray for many others as well that are not feeling well at this time. We, um, we pray for little Seth. Thank you so much that he is a lot better but still suffers from eczema and he still cries a lot. But Lord, you know this little child and may you touch him and heal him. Pray for many children. Some of them are in hospitals that are going through a lot of problems, different kinds of problems. But Lord, you are the only healer that we can turn to, the only physician that can heal mentally, physically, and spiritually. So we bring all these little children before you. 
also want to pray for uh, a lady called uh, Ellen, Elena. She's critically ill in hospital. She has pneumonia. Her left lung at the base has collapsed. They are going to ventilate it. Doesn't look good. She has said she may possibly die. This is from um, our sister Shirley with that request. Dear Father, we bring Elena to you. You know her, dear Father, and what she's going through. There's nothing much we can do but bring her to the foot of the cross that you may touch her and heal her according to your will. Dear Father, all these people that are suffering from cancer, from all kinds of illnesses, may you touch them and heal them according to your will. We want to thank you, dear Father, for hearing and answering our prayers according to your will. Also want to bring many other requests, dear Father, um, children that are, are now leaving the faith and joining the Islam group. There is so many youths that are finding that the church is not um, what it used to be. Dear Lord, we just pray that you may bring these children back again to the faith. We can see how uh, this religion of Islam is spreading across the world. Wherever it is, dear Father, we know that you are in control. But we leave it in your hands that you may bring these children back home again, dear Father, before it is too late. We realize that um, so many um, people are going astray, dear Father, but may it be your will that you they come back to you. We want to give you the thanks, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. Amen. Don't know if you've got any uh, prayer requests, Sister Angela. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now, Sister. Wait a moment. Now? Um, yes. Our children and grandchildren, the whole family, we are driving to a little church with my husband. He wants to build something that it will be able to to do uh, streaming and to record uh, sermons and so on. This is one thing. We have a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there is a sister, yeah. There's a sister in India. Her name is Boyla. And um, she's doing medical missionary work. But she needs uh, support in some way that the Lord helps her to earn some money in, money in the one or in the other way. There are many others. There is um, in Kenya, there is um, a couple and they also are doing medical missionary work and they are building a well that this will go forward. And there is an orphanage, Pivago. Uh, they need um, sponsors for orphans, for example, and many, many other things. Also decisions we are taking. And, yeah, it is so much to pray for. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll pray for uh, for the sustained the medical missionary, Father in heaven. I'll come before you again, praying for the medical missionary, the sister in, in Kenya, and you heard the request from Sister Angela. All these people, dear Father, we bring them to the foot of the cross because you know each need. You, need, you know where the money is needed and where the money is going to be coming from to help these people that are in Africa that are uh, wanting to dig a well and others are doing medical missionary. And we also just seen a request for um, uh, Brother Mwimbi. We don't know what, 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 um, uh, what situation he is in, in, but we bring him to you as well, dear Father of... Um, some dispute that has been going on and um lord is looking for 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 money to um to help him fight this case whatever it may be dear lord you know the situation and we leave it in your hands we pray for people that are wanting to move out into the countryside and are looking for places and they do not know which way to turn but only you can lead them the rightful way 
where, wherever they turn, dear Father, it, it seems as if um, um, the, ro the roads are closed, but only you can open up. Open up for these people that want to do the right thing and move out into the countryside and learn about uh, country living. Not that they're running away from the, from the cities, but you have told us to get out of the cities because we can see what is happening in the cities. It is now getting worse than Sodom and Gomorrah with all the fighting, all the upheaval that is happening in the cities. And it is difficult to bring up children in situations like this. So we pray, dear Lord, for country living, for people that are, are wanting to move out before it is too late. We also want to... Um, bring the, um, the the prayer retreat at this time as they are doing the health expo, giving out books and whatever um, they, they are doing for you, dear Lord, we bring them before you that you may help them, that you may go before them and go with them and that they may get in touch with a lot of people and that people may give their lives to you. Also pray for the self-supporting ministry uh, this prayer retreat and many others, the loud crime ministry and many ministries, dear Lord, that are taking your word out. We pray for the speakers that come come on the platform day in and day out, dear Lord, to break the bread of life with each and every one of us. We pray that you may speak through them and that your word may be heard more than man's word. We pray also for their families, dear Lord, as they um, support the speakers in many ways and being there for them. We pray for their children. We pray for the rest of their families um, that they may also give their lives to you. Pray for many others as well. Pray for my family that are in Romania, that, um, that you may open up ways for them to, to move out into the countryside. Also pray for my daughter who's looking for a place that you may open up doors for her. Pray um, for, for, for many people that are asking for prayer requests, dear Lord. The list is inexhaustible. We have prayer requests for the sick, the bereaved. There's so many that have lost their loved ones in our church. There's a family that has lost an uncle and a niece many others as well that have lost their loved ones. We bring them to the foot of the cross that you may help them, touch them and heal them according to your will and give them the peace that they need and let them know that um, you are there with them, going through the grief with them, dear Father. So we want to give you the thanks, the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. So... Uh, I don't know what else you, I, I can read just a little portion from the, um, from the sanctified life, because that's what we were supposed to be reading. <clears throat> just a, a, a quick recap of um, the sanctified life. Um, right. Uh, it says about true and false theories contrasted. We see that there's so many uh, ideas that are coming into the, into the church. And Paul prays that the church at Thessalonica may enjoy um, the, the, the blessing that only come from God and that God is the only peace that we can, we, we can go to. And it's the only um truth that we, we can turn to because when we when we look uh, around there's so many things that are going on in, in our world today and then also um we spoke about our savior was and our savior ever condemned self-righteousness because sometimes we think to ourselves we are right we are right with god and everything is is well and we just want to push christ aside but that's not the case and then substituting feeling for reason. Because sometimes when we when we think, oh, we're feeling this way and we're feeling that way, and then we think that, yeah, we are sanctified. But that is far from the truth. And then uh, we also came across the testing time because there will be a testing time. 
when we look at the the evergreen tree, when the winter uh, uh, comes, the evergreen tree always stands above all the other trees and the other trees um, uh, um, die, and um, but the evergreen is always there. So that's the way Christ wants us to be, grounded in his word and his word alone. And then also fruit bearing, we need to be um, bearing fruit for 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 Christ, and then we'll be, and then we will know that we are on the right path if we um, are following God's way. So now we are on page fourteen. I will read. We just got a few more. Um, paragraphs to read page 14 and and then it says all who come into the sphere of his influence perceive the beauty and fragrance of his christian life while he himself is unconscious of it for it is in harmony with his habits and inclinations he prays for divine light and loves to walk in that light it is his meat and drink to do the will of his heavenly father his life is hid with Christ in God, yet he does not boast of this, nor seem conscious of it. God smiles upon the humble and lowly ones who follow closely in the footsteps of the master. Angels are attracted to them and love to linger about their path. They may be passed by as unworthy of notice by those who claim exalted attention attainments and who delight in making prominent their good works but heavenly angels bend lovingly over them and are as the wall of fire round about them why christ was rejected our savior was the light of the world but the world knew him not he was constantly employed in works of mercy shedding light upon the pathway of all yet he did not call upon those with whom he mingled to behold his exemplified virtue, his self-denial, self-sacrifice, and benevolence. The Jews did not admire such a life. They considered his religion worthless because it did not accord with their standard of piety. They decided that Christ was not religious in spirit or character, for their religion consisted in display, in praying publicly, and in doing works of charity for effect. They triumphed their good deeds, as do those who claim sanctification. They would have all understood that they are without sin. But the whole life of Christ was in direct contrast to this. He sought neither gain nor honor. His wonderful acts of healing were performed in, in as quiet a manner as possible. Although he could not restrain the enthusiasm of those who were the recipients of his great blessings. Hum humility and meekness characterized his life, and it was because of his lowly walk and unassuming manners, which were in such marked contrast to their own that the Pharisees would not accept him. Meekness, a fruit of the spirit. The most precious fruit of sanctification is the grace of meekness. When this grace precise in the soul, the disposition is molded by its influence. There is a continual waiting upon God and a submission of the world to his. The understanding grasps every divine truth and the world, bow, and the world bows to every divine precept without doubting or murmuring. True meekness softens and subdues the heart and gives the mind a fitness for the engraved word. It brings the thoughts into obedience to Jesus Christ. It opens the heart to the word of God. As Lydia's was opened, it places us with Mary as learners at the feet of Jesus. The meek will be guided in judgment and the meek will, will he teach his way. That's taken from Psalm 25 verse 9. The language of the meek is never that of boasting. Like the child Samuel, they pray. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. That's taken from 1 Samuel 3, verse 9. When Joshua was placed in the highest position of honor as commander of Israel, he bade 
defiance to all the enemies of God. His heart was filled with noble thoughts of his great, of his great mission. Yet upon the in, intimation of a message from heaven, he placed himself in the position of a little child to be directed. What saith my Lord unto his servant? That's Joshua 5 verse 14 was his response. The first words of Paul after Christ was revealed to him were, Lord, what, what wilt thou have me to do? That's Acts 9 uh, verse 6. Meekness in the school of Christ is one of the marked fruits of the Spirit. It is a grace wrought by the Holy Spirit as a sanctifier and enables its possessor at all times to control a rash and impenitent temper. When the grace of meekness is cherished by those who are naturally sour or hasty in disposition, they will put forth the most earnest efforts to subdue their unhappy temper. Every day they will gain self-control until that which is unlovingly and unlike Jesus is conquered. They become uh, assimilated to the divine pattern until they can obey the inspired injection, injunction. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. That's taken from James 1 verse 19. When a man professes to be sanctified and yet in words, and works may be represented by the impure fountain sending forth its bitter waters, we may safely say, that man is deceived. He needs to learn the very alphabet of what constitutes the life of a Christian. Some who profess to be servants of Christ have so long cherished the demon of unkindness that they seem to love the unhallowed element and to take pleasure in speaking words that displease and irritate. These men must be converted before Christ will acknowledge them as his children. Meekness is the inward adorning which God esteems as of great price. The apostle speaks of this as more excellent and valuable than gold or pearls or costly array. While the outward adorning beautifies only the moral body, the ornament of meekness adorns the soul and connects finite man with the infinite God. This is the ornament of God's own choice. He who garnishes the heavens with the orbs of light has by the same spirit promised that he will beautify the meek with salvation. Psalm 149 verse 4. Angels of heaven will register as best adorned those who put on the Lord Jesus Christ and walk with him in meekness and lowliness of mind. There are high attainments for the Christian. He may ever be rising to higher attainments. John had an elevated idea of the privilege of a Christian. He says, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. That's taken from 1 John 3 verse 1. It is not possible for humanity to rise to a higher dignity than is here implied. To man is granted the privilege of becoming an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. To those who have been thus exalted are unfolded the unsearchable riches of Christ, which are of a thousandfold more value than the wealth of the world. Thus, through the merits of Jesus Christ, finite man is elevated to fellowship with God and with his dear son. Amen. Are there any comments on what we've, we've read? The things that I take away is... Um, it is away. wonderful. It is wonderful, dear Sister Hoda. Mm. It is really wonderful. Thank you. I have to think about this because I think this I'm missing. <laughs> Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you can yeah. listen to it again and you can yeah. read it as well. Yeah, yes. what, what I took away was uh, why Christ was rejected. I think it's because with Christ, he wasn't forceful in anything because whereas now people uh, think, oh, the one that uh, people uh, accepted are the one that force they, they beliefs and force everything upon other people but Christ wasn't like that he came meek he was meek he was 
He, he was just humble and he did everything without a show off as as the 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 Pharisees did. I mean, when we look at the read about the Pharisees, they were out in the street praying aloud and so that people can see them. But Christ didn't do that. He walked, he was lowly, he, he had manners, he had, you know, he, he was respectful in every way. And that is the character that Christ wants us to 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 have. And the and here as it says, meekness, a fruit of the spirit. So we see that meekness is one of the fruit of the spirit that we should have. And, the, and that is marked by how we conduct ourselves in front of, of people and also asking God, what does God want us to do? Because as, as, uh, uh, as it also says here, when uh, like Samuel, he says, speak Lord for thy servant hear it. So it's for us to hear more and speak less because some of us, we want to hear our own voices and go on and on and speaking, and yet we're not listening to what God is telling us. So it's we need to just humble ourselves and uh, uh, and ask the Lord and say, well, Lord, what, what do you want me to do for you? Because he has done everything for us. And as it says here in James 1 verse 19, be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath and that is so true because we we need to hear god's word more and more than 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 hearing our own voices so that's what i took away from here so i don't know if there's any other comment i have really to think about it just to start with our uh, uh... It is true we have to be meek. I have also to be meek. And I think some people say, no, nah, and, and I know it, I have I have to learn this. And, mm. uh, yeah. Mm. yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, I mean, we all need to be meek. We all need to have the patience most of the time because sometimes I know I'm speaking for myself. Sometimes I don't have uh, the patience to to, to listen to people, I, I just want, you know, when somebody's speaking and I'm just wanting to be heard. So, yeah. Okay, if there's uh, nothing else, uh, I will pray. Uh, seeing that, Sister Angela, you are un unable to, uh, unless you want to just give a quick prayer, Sister Angela. And Yes, yes, that's what I do. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you so much that you're reminding me on the meekness. Help me and everyone to be meek and looking unto you and asking you what to say and what not to say. And give us your Holy Spirit. And let's walk humbly before you because the meekness is of great price. And I will praise you and thank you for everything what you are doing. Please I pray in the almighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And somebody on Samson, would you like to pray? Maybe not. Okay, I'll pray. Father in heaven, we want to give you the thanks, the praise, and the glory for your for your word. May we be uh, slow to speak, dear Father. May we hear your word telling us which way to go. In everything that we do, Father, may we put you first early in the morning. We want to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory as soon as we wake up and ask you, Lord, what you what you want us to do for you because you have done so much for us. You've given us your son, and he showed us the way to live, the way he walked his character, dear Lord, and that is what you want us to, to build is our character to be more like Christ. So we want to thank you, dear Lord. Forgive us for our sinful ways. We stumble and fall every day, Lord. We fall short of your glory. And when we look around, who will be saved, dear Father, the way we are carrying on now? But Lord, we know that you forgive us for our sinful ways. So we want to thank you for that. We thank you again for the Holy Spirit working in our lives, showing us which way to go. And help us, dear Father, with the help of the Holy Spirit, that we may be meek. And, and humble and follow Christ in everything that we do and say, dear Lord, may it be of you and you alone. Help us, dear Father, 
uh, as we cannot do it on our own. We'll, we feel short of your glory at all times. But Father, we want to give you the thanks, the praise and the glory. And as we uh, separate from each other, dear Lord, but never away from your presence, may we always uh, uh, see you uh, before us. In Jesus' name, I pray and thank you. Amen. Okay. Okay. Thank you.